Welcome to Brands Hatch for round three of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. My name's Sean Hollenby and I'm going to be showing you around behind the scenes while you watch the Pitch BTCC programme. We've got all the info on what's happening on the track and off the track. Why not download the Pitch BTCC app, get involved, download your videos for pit time, ask the drivers questions, you'll find out exactly what goes on behind the scenes in the British Touring Car Championship. So round three of the British Touring Car Championship comes to Brands Hatch in Kent with world famous corners like Paddock Hill Bend, Druids the Hairpin, Graham Hill, Surtees, Clearways. These are all corners that every motorsport fan will know about. In the background we can hear the Janetta Juniors just about to hit the track off the line. They'll be going into Paddock Hill Bend first of all, which is a really daunting corner. And then going up the hill from Paddock Hill They'll be Druids, tight right-handed hairpin, and then down for another tight left-hander at Graham Hill. Then across the back straight here, going into Surtees, which goes into a fast left, into a fast right, ready for braking for clearways, and then back onto the start and finish straight. It really is that quicker track, and keeps the drivers really busy. I'm looking forward now to seeing who's going to be quick in free practice one and two, which will give us a good idea of how qualifying is going to be. Remember, success ballast could be key, especially around such a tight, twisty circuit as the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit, named because it's like an Indy Circuit, rather than the big Grand Prix circuit that we go to later in the year. So, looking forward to seeing how the drivers get on, looking to so forward to see which cars are going to be quick around this circuit, and we'll have a chat with some of the drivers to see how their sessions went. So we've just finished free practice one here at Brands Hatch. The fastest man so far of the day is Gordon Shedden, but it's very, very close. Three tenths of a second cover the top 15, so it shows you how tight it is. But Gordon hasn't got any success ballast. He's very, very quick. He scrubbed all his tyres in during that session at the start, so he's very confident. And just behind him is his team teammate Dan Rowbottom, who's third or fourth was quick all the session as well. So the Honda's looking strong for this weekend. So I'm here in the Accelerate garage here with Rick Parfit Jr. who's been out in his Hyundai this morning. So how was the track this morning? I know you've had one test day, but very little running really. Yeah, I, I mean, everyone says, oh, you know the circuit but from GTs, but I'm used to the, um, to the GP circuit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also um, it feels like it's a completely new circuit because the skill set that I used to get hustle a big heavy Bentley around here with downforce and traction control and ABS is completely different. So all the braking areas are different, the turns are different. And Surtees is a really, really interesting little corner. It comes up really quickly and there's definitely a knack. But you know, considering I was just scrubbing tires in that first session and um, and then I just had a few quick laps at the end, um, but um, they were on tires that had done well over a race at Snetterson. So I was really, really happy to be only uh, less than a second off the fastest time, considering my, uh, you know, experience around here. That was that was great, and I feel like there's a load more to come as well. I'm still not quite getting to, to grips with the rear steer. I'm still learning. I, I I really feel that I'm I'm definitely a rookie in every sense at the moment, and and just starting to learn the car and the team are getting to learn to my style because I don't left foot brake either. So we've got to try and set the car up to account for. It. We can't double pedal, so when you're comparing all the data to like Ting Room and stuff like that, which is great, you know, you've got to account for the fact that he's able to initiate both things, yeah, which yeah. is great because these are really sensitive how you set up and especially around here, how you load the car is everything. It can make a corner really hairy or yeah, it yeah. can make a corner a non-entity. So I'm still learning, but you know, considering, really happy. No, good. Yeah. So also, I, it looked really, really busy on circuit. I saw you yeah, had a bit yeah. of damage on the back. What happened there? I, I was just coming into the pits and I think Jake thought uh, I wasn't and um, wanted to maybe get a bit of a toe or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, he, uh, he had a little, uh, he had a little uh, argument with my rear bumper. <laughs> 
Well, that's yeah. Something it gets a little bit like that because it is so tight here. I mean, you're, you're yeah. constantly changing gear, constantly braking, and then you've got another 20 other, 28 other cars out there with you to trying to do exactly the same thing. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine what it's going to be like in the race. You know, because you're going to be looking forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards, and in everything's your mirrors are going to be totally full. So, and 24 laps around this little circuit is going to be quite hard work to be honest. And to do three races is wow. I mean, that's it's a bit of a daunting task to be honest because. Unlike some of the bigger circuits, um, there's, you, you don't have a moment to relax. You're, you're, you're constantly working here. There is, there is no chance to really get into a rhythm. Um, and you know, when I was on the GP circuit in the Bentley, you could just, it was almost balletic when you're going fast. It's all very flowy and you know, you've got into it. You can get into a really nice flow and a rhythm. Here, it's just like, um, you feel a bit like a fighter pilot. So you're, you're constantly, constantly on the edge, constantly moving, constantly shifting weight, constantly trying to balance the brake, constantly trying to get on the throttle again, constantly trying to make the car rotate, you know, to maximize the tires. The tires are changing all the time. Even in that session, the tires went from pretty bad to absolutely atrocious for me. And um, so there's just no time for to take a breath, really. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a person of my age and, uh, and my, <laughs> my limited ability, this is going to be quite a tall order. Well, it sounds like you're really enjoying your British touring car experience. So good luck yeah. in qualifying later. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm here with Ollie Jackson, who is one of the stars of Snetterton. So how did free practice go for you? Uh, to be honest, a little bit underwhelming. Um, we've, we're only running around an old rubber, and I think we've pretty well cooked the rubber at Snetterton, so we we're never going to set the world alight. But, uh, but no, it's all right. The car balance, the car feels good. Making a couple of changes. So no, I think uh, we'll see how it goes when we bolt some decent rubber off. So when you say you're running around on old rubber, what, why would you do that? It sounds a bit of a waste of time, but you know, why do you have to do that? Well, because, because we're only allowed a certain allocation of tyres and um, we were allowed a certain number of carryovers from the previous round as well. So what we try and do is we want to save the tyres for qualifying for the race uh, as much as possible. So we've got as good a tyres on the car for when we're actually competing. So in free practice, we just use the old rubber from the last round out of our allocation of carryovers. So, I mean, you're very, very experienced around here in a British touring car. How was the track this morning compared to your previous visits? Dusty, um, a lot of marbles. I don't think they'd actually swept the track since um, yesterday. So that was a, a bit of a, a shock, to be honest, because normally it's all swept and it's absolutely pristine. So going offline was um, was a bit of an issue if, um, if you made a small mistake, which you don't always get with free practice. Usually it's a kind of a race two or three thing tomorrow. But, um, but no, it's just, um, I mean, otherwise it's just brands. And now, you've qualified in the top 10 for both races so far in the season. Do you think you'll be able to do that again today? Yeah, I think I qualified um, uh, top 10 here last year, and um, I think we were quick in testing as well. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking to, definitely. So we'll see how it goes. All right, thanks very much, Ollie. Good luck today. Another driver who had a great performance in free practice one was Aaron Taylor-Smith, and there's his Cupra behind me with my matching shirt and livery. They'll be pleased that I've really got in the team spirit for Team Hard this weekend. But really good start for Aaron Taylor-Smith. He knows his way well around Brands Hatch, and I'm sure that he's gonna try and get up into the top 10 in qualifying. So I've just grabbed Rory Butcher here as he was coming out of the technical toker bus. I mean, I'm not sure quite what you were doing in there and you probably won't want to tell me, but how was your free practice session? Yeah, it was, it was fine. We, uh, we ran to our, our plan and, uh, you know, we've got a little bit of work to do. I don't feel like we're right in the mix, but I never am in practice. I always seem to find a bit in quality and we've got some, uh, some changes we're going to make to the car, looking at data, can I improve? And uh, we'll have another go in FP2. So, I mean, you've been actually really quick all year, but then had a little bit of bad luck at Thruxton, but it all seemed to start getting back on song at Snetterton. It did, it was an amazing event, you know. It's like you come off a, a tough weekend like Thruxton, and it's, you, you know, it's, it, you've just got, always got to work at trying to keep your head, head up and your chin up. And then we go to Snet and we have a great weekend. You know, we're on the, the second row in qualifying, we get our first podium, and uh, you see coming in the garage and just seeing everybody's faces light up when you've got that, that bit of silverware, it just makes it all uh, worth it. And uh, Hey, we're back up in the mix. We went from P15 in the championship, we're now P6. And uh, it's a long season. Just gonna have to keep working at it, Sean. No, that's right. Well, yeah. also, that means you haven't got much success, Ballas. So you must be looking pretty strong for qualifying in the races tomorrow. Yeah, I, I would like to think so. Um, you know, we've got 33 kilograms, uh, probably uh, about what you weigh, Sean. Yeah? Just my wallet. <laughs> yeah, your wallet. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna hold us back a touch, but there's guys out there who've got more, and uh, yeah, we fancy our chances tomorrow having a good day. 
I think the weather is going to throw in a, a, a little bit of uh, spice as well. So it should be a, a good day of racing. So we've just finished free practice two here here at Brands Hatch and Senna Proctor's P5, which is a, a real big step forward, only joined last meeting at Snetterton. So looks like it's all going well for you, Sen. Yeah, it's going all right. Yeah, we, um, we've we not really touched the car. We've just, you know, I've just every session I've just came in and said, you know, the car's there, thereabouts. There's always more in me than there is in the car at the minute because of the lack of pre-season testing. So it's just making sets forward every time and just um, just trying to do the best job we can. Yeah. I mean, I, I spoke to you just after free practice one. You said, I'm still a little bit rusty, you know, because mm -hmm. you haven't been in the car for sort of five, six months, really. So it's, it's a, a big difference to jump into a British touring car and try to be bang on the pace. Yeah, when you go testing, you, you're always really conscious about driving round and learning. But when, you, when you're batting around Snetterton and there's 29 other cars around you, it's all, it's all, all happening a bit subconsciously. So I kind of came away from the weekend and went, Oh right, yeah, that just happened. So um, for me now, it's just it was back to the drawing board. Really study the data hard. Um, come here with no ballast in, and we uh, we seem to be up there at the minute. No, fantastic. So looking forward to qualifying. Do you think you've got the pace to, to keep in the top ten? Uh, yeah, my lap was pretty shabby. So you know, I'll, I'll probably do what feels like a great lap, and it'll be slower. But you know, it's just one of them things. You know, we. We just need to keep extracting the most out of the car and I just need to keep learning. That's the main thing and, and the results will come. No, good stuff. Well, I'll let you get back to your engineers. I'm sure they want to pour through the data and see if you can make you go even quicker. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully we can hopefully we can find a few more attempts. There's still a couple to find. Join us after the break. We'll have all the action from qualifying. See who sets the fastest time to get at the front of the grid for tomorrow's race one. Looks like it's been very, very close, so don't miss any of the action. Welcome back to the Pitch BTCC show. Let's look back at race one from the Brands Hatch Indie Circuit last year. Wet conditions definitely shuffled the feel up, but it was Honda and Sutton in that infinity still up the front. The next chapter in the story set to be written as the lights go out. Who makes the best start? Let's see. It's a good getaway by Ingram. Good start by Canish as well. Sutton tries to find a way ahead of Butcher, which he succeeds in doing. Can he get up the inside of Ingram as they dive down towards Paddock Hill Bend? No, he cannot. So Ingram leads the way. It is Sutton second, and Canish tries to go around the outside there to go third at the expense of Butcher, which he does. Great move, and it's worked for him as Ingram leads into Druids for the first time. Kamish goes second, then takes points away from Sutton. Glyn Geddy, Sam Osborne, off the road at Druid. Kamish keeps on coming, he's sideways, he saves it. Is he going to go deep into the corner? He's got the race lead, he's run out wide. Ingram is back up alongside him, they're going to lean on each other down the hill. Kamish goes through and takes over the race lead. This could be the move for second place, he's going to do it. Through goes Sutton. He comes up towards the chequered flag. It's going to tee him up nicely for the championship. Dan Kamish wins race one of the day. We've just had a really exciting qualifying session. We're going to have all the interviews from the drivers at the front, middle and back of the field. Let's see how everybody got on. So it's pretty rare to get a one-two for a team in British Touring Car qualifying, but we've just had that with Halfords Racing with Cataclean team. We've got Gordon Shedden, who's, Peter, you're better at saying that than me. So I should have left that yeah. to you, shouldn't I? But a great result for the team with P2 for you and Dan Brobottom on pole. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when was the last time a team got a one-two? I can't even, I'm actually, while well, you're saying that, trying to remember, but um, you know, it's great, super close out there. And um, all to play for tomorrow. I think it's, you know, it's notoriously close round here. What was it? In, in free practice too, is there 28 cars within a second or something like that? So it's absolute madness. But I think we are in a good place tomorrow. Uh, you know, both cars at the front, which is fantastic. You know, for me personally, I'm actually quite happy to start on the outside here. You know, that P2 position on the top of the hill hasn't been the worst place to start in previous years. So we're going to give it a damn good go tomorrow and see how we go. Well, that the session looked quite, it looked like hard work. All the cars seemed to be a little bit oversteering, especially through paddock. How, how was the balance for your car? Yeah, and I think the, you know, the, the ambient, you know, conditions changed quite a lot after FP2. It cooled down quite a bit. I think it caught, you know, certainly caught us out. I wouldn't say it caught us out, but it made the car very different from FP2. 
Um, but same for everybody, everyone pushing the boundaries, everybody pushing the limits, uh, lots of track limits, warnings all over the place. It looked like it was, uh, yeah, it was beginning to get a bit of a free-for-all at the end, which is, uh, which is a shame. But yeah, everyone's got the same bit to play with. So it's always great to have a first time race winner or pole position setter. And we've got one here with Dan Rowbottom. What a great lap, Dan. I know, I know. It sort of, yeah, all came together at the right time, really. We've been throwing in it all day. You know, both of us, been, we've been quick, FP1 and FP2. So to pull it out of the bag when it mattered was, uh, was great. Well, you looked really strong at Thruxton, but you looked like a little dip in performance at Snetterton, but, you know, banged it right back here. Yeah, I, I still don't really know what happened at Snet. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a bad weekend. You know, we scored points in all three races, but it wasn't really the pointy of point scoring area we wanted to be so um, I knew that we had to come back here and be strong so to start off with pole is I'll take that and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Well I saw both you and Gordon who also got a one two for the, the team which is fantastic um, you were scrubbing tyres and saving tyres again in free practice one was that another tactic to help for race day? Uh, I don't really know I mean the, we do all of our scrubbing in FP1 we didn't do it at the previous team I was with, but, but the guys do it here. And you know, I, I've got a lot of trust in the Halfers Race for Cat Clean team. So whatever they say to do, we just we just we just a bit behind the wheel that holds on. So uh, no, it was great. You know, the, the car's been good all day, and it's just given me the ability to have that extra confidence that you need around here. Yeah. And is it is it interesting working with Gordon because obviously he's extremely experienced. I mean, sharing data with somebody who you can sort of hundred percent trust, and you know, you're you're really using that data to make yourself better. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better position really because. We've got Gordon, who's my present teammate. Obviously, Dan Cam's been in the car. Dan Cam is a very, very good driver. And then sort of sat on my shoulder mentoring me is Matt Neal. So I've kind of got all no excuses, really. You know, I've got all the information I could want. It's just about me putting it all together. That's fantastic. Well, you definitely did that in that session. Good luck in the races tomorrow. Thank you. One of the big surprises and big step forwards from Aidan Moffat in the Infinity. Aidan, what a great session for you. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice change being able to smile on that Saturday <laughs> evening rather than sulk. <laughs> um, you know, we've had great pace this year in the car. Um, the first round, you know, we were a bit late, uh, myself and the, the team jumping to the slicks on that dry and qualifying. Uh, the last round, we, we, we had a problem with the rear end, uh, just a setup wise uh, uh, at Snetterton. So we, we had the pace on race day, we came through. Um, Fruxton, you know, we had a bit of bad luck, the car cut out from fourth. Um, Snetterton, the driver's error with the lining up and getting the penalty so we, we, we've had the pace it's just we've, we've not shown it on a Saturday so yeah to, to go out and get a, a top five in qualifying which uh, I can't remember the last time you were that high up and it's uh, the highest since I moved to rear wheel drive it's, it's, it's a rewarding and it's uh, yeah we needed that with me as a driver and the team. So I'm here with third place qualifier Jake Hill in the MB Motorsport Ford Focus. I, I think he might be a little bit unhappy with third because he was spent most of the session in first place. But how was that session? Yeah, it was good, Sean. Um, you know, like you say, we, we got provisional pole quite early in, in the session on my first tyre run. Um, and yeah, the car was just night and day to what it was this morning. No, there's, there's no hiding that we, we were generally struggling this morning and a little bit lost as to where all our speed has gone, to be honest. But big shout out to my engineer, Craig, and, and all the team at MB Motorsport Accelerated by Blue Square to really get on top of the car, um, figure out what, what we think it needs to work. And yeah, hats off to the guys. They, they've done, guys and girls, they've done a fantastic job. Now, when you say change to the car, what sort of changes can you make to actually improve it from really, where, where were you this morning, 18th, 19th, something like that at some yeah. point? It was, it was really a pretty bad practice session. So what changes can you make to make the car suddenly a, a potential pole position setting car? Well, it's just, you know, it's just understanding what, what we're lacking, you know, and, and then making changes away from there. But, you know, we've just been through all the suspension stuff and everything and just figured out exactly what, what we think we need to, to get it up there. and. Yeah, they've done a great job, you know, they went through all the ins and outs, studied the data very thoroughly and um, yeah, like I say, it's a really good job by everyone, really proud. So, I mean, going back to Snetterton, mm. you had good pace there, a really good result in the first race with maximum ballast. I know you and the whole team were expecting big things that day, but it sort of slightly fell apart in race two with excessive tyre wear. I mean, do you think you've got on top of that problem now heading towards tomorrow? Yeah, well, the good thing here is we don't have to run the soft tyre, you know, and to be honest, the soft tyre is where our problem lies, it seems. The medium tyre we seem to be quite happy on. You know, the issues we've had today aren't tyre related, they're just general chassis feel. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty confident that regardless uh, what happens tomorrow in the races, we should be able to stay right at the front all day, I would hope.
So looking forward to tomorrow, you're happy with your long distance pace in the Honda. Any other tweaks you need to make after qualifying to make it even better? Yeah, I hope so. I think almost half our problem today has been turning the thing on for one lap. So our runs are okay. Uh, you know, we can do the lap time consistently. We've just been struggling to get the ultimate out of it, um, you know, for me. So you know, that bodes well for tomorrow. At least we're in the hunt and that's all we can ask for. You know, some light cars round about, some rear wheel drive cars by the looks of it as well. So uh, yeah, it's going to be going to be fast and frantic tomorrow for sure. Well, good luck tomorrow. Maybe a one, two in the results as well as in qualifying. Uh, I mean, obviously that's the aim, but you know, we've got a, you know, rear wheel drive, you know, rear wheel drive car directly behind me and another, I think Moffat's up there in fifth as well. So, you know, we, first things first, we've got to try and get to the first corner first and then we'll take the rest of the race from there. So, I mean, a, another thing as well is going into tomorrow, rear wheel drive, tyre wear is going to be a good thing, but also what's happening with the weather? Yeah, I mean, usually I'd come here and I'd be doing a, a, a rain dance um, and I've never liked it here, but to, I've, I've kind of, for some strange reason, I've just changed my mind all of a sudden. <laughs> I quite like this ride. Funny that. <laughs> no, it's funny how that works. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I know, we, we know the Infinity's strong in the rain. We have had a, a lot of good results in, in, in the wet weather. Uh, and uh, it turns out, it, if you drive it right, it ain't half bad in the dry either. So what, whatever the weather, obviously, we'll be uh, looking to kind of try and make the most of a strong Saturday. Good luck, well, good luck tomorrow. Let's hope it doesn't rain, because I'll get my shirt all wet. But <laughs> coming from you, that's good, that's good. Because your dress sense is a lot better than mine. I think us are both a bit wacky. I think that's why we appreciate them. <laughs> that's brilliant. Good luck tomorrow. Great qualifying session. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. I mean, they're looking at that, it's, it's quite a, a strong field. A couple of surprises in there, yeah. but you've got rear wheel drive cars behind you. So it could be a little bit hectic, those first few corners. I don't know, my starts have become fire, so I'm really <laughs> pleased with that. Um, yeah, I did my best ever start this morning in FP2, so I feel like I've really got on top of that, and hopefully that will give me enough to maybe just keep Oliphant and hopefully Moffat at bay uh, going into Turn 1. And then obviously I can just try and hang on to the Hondas, or, or even better, try and get past one or two of them. and and off we go. But I'm feeling feeling really confident. Carl's been good, team's been good today, and yeah, we move on to tomorrow, filled with hopes and dreams. So after exciting qualifying session, let's look through the grid times and see who came where. So a fantastic result for Team Dynamics with a one-two on the grid for Dan Rowbottom and Gordon Shedden, closely followed by Jake Hill, who held pole position for most of the session, but just got pipped at the end by those two Hondas. But he'll be happy with P3. Then you've got Tom Oliphant in a rear-wheel drive BMW, closely followed by Aidan Moffitt with a fantastic result in P5, another rear-wheel drive car. So off the line, you might see those guys hassling those front-wheel drive cars into Paddock Hill Bend. Then after that, we've got Tom Ingram in the Hyundai, who I had a quick chat with earlier on. He's quite happy, really, in that sort of position. He's got a lot of success ballast on, so he'll be looking towards making progress forward and maybe getting rid of some of that for race two. And then behind Tom, we've got Ash Sutton, championship leader, maximum success ballast, and he's only just, just under three tenths of a second off a pole. That boy's so quick, and that car's really hooked up round here, so race two's looking good for them. Then we've got Chris Smiley in the Hyundai for a very good qualifying session from him. Then Josh Cook, who's back into the top 10 after really being slightly out of sorts at Snetterton last time out in qualifying, but got it together in race three. Then after that, we've got Stephen Jelly, another good result in the BMW. Outside of the top 10, the big story really is Colin Turkington, who's right down in 14th place. Yes, he's got success ballast on, but that's not where he wants to start the day tomorrow for race one. Join us after the break for more news, views and insight of the fantastic British Touring Car Championship. Welcome back to race day here at Brands Hatch. There's a little bit of fog and a little bit of moisture in the air, so that could affect things on track. Looking forward to seeing whether the qualifying results turn into the race results today. But click onto the Pitch BTCC app, download all the information, find out what's going on and get involved in the conversation. Here are the predictions for race one that you, the fans, have made on the Pitch BTCC app. I wonder if any of you have got it right.
Here are the highlights of race one, courtesy of ITV Sport. Like to go red, engine notes rise. We're racing, not a great start by Robot, it's got to be said. And a great start by Oliphant, who goes round the outside. A good start by Aidan Moffat as well, and Sutton. So Robot is swamped in the pack, and Oliphant leads. What about Shedden's chances of hanging on in there? He's second into panic, he's going to drop to third, is he? Good start by Ingram. Here comes Sutton, all that pace, 75 kilos on board, round the outside. He's got one of them, can he get both on the run up the hill? Aidan Moffat holding up Shedden. Is that going to help his teammate? No, because now Shedden does go through. Robot to the inside of Jake Hill. Is he going to make that move? Yes, he is. Dives through side by side and Robo goes by. Was that him recovering from a speed? I think it was. It looked like it, didn't it? Absolutely. So Turkington's troubled weekend continued. Yeah, Rick Harper. Well, someone Druids. else involved with their contact there or breaking up into Druids. The BMW has a wobble. If anybody can try it, it's going to be Shannon. Look, he's in the toe. Can he dive out at the last moment? He can't quite do it, but it's going to be absolutely those two tail. Tom Oliphant wins over the timing line. The BMW takes the win by 0.188 of a second. Second is Gordon Shannon. Dan Robottom is third and for fourth place. Jake Hill will just come through ahead of Ash Sutton to hang on in there. The Ford ahead of the Infinity. Sixth is Tom Ingram. So, Tom Oliphant opens his 2021 race win account with a fantastic performance in his West Surrey racing BMW. Closely followed over the line, I have to say, by Gordon Shedden, who was hunting him down over those last few laps. Dan Robottom fought back after a bit of a dodgy start when he dropped back to seventh or eighth place, but got himself back onto the podium. And then we saw a good battle between Jake Hill and Ash Sutton, who were fighting over that for the fourth, fifth place battle. Very exciting start to the day. I'm sure it's going to get even better as the day goes on. It wasn't the most interesting of touring car races, but um, yeah, it's tough. Obviously, we had Success Ballast on board. Good to get that race done. Hopefully, it, um, get it out of the way and hopefully pick up a bit of pace for race two. Yeah, sadly, I mean, it turns into a bit of a game with all the variations that we have, you know, with. Uh, sometimes we have tyre options, obviously the success ballast. Um, luckily here we've just got the success ballast. Hopefully now it comes out. Um, yeah, you just have to kind of treat it a bit like a yeah, a bit, bit of a game, play the game through the through the course of the day. So yesterday in qualifying was okay. P9, kind of status quo in race one. Um, yeah, take the weight out. Hopefully we can move forward. The, obviously the quick guys uh, from, from race one are we you know, laden with ballast now. So. Um, yeah, just got to see how it goes. It's a little bit colder today than it was yesterday. It does affect the balance of the car a little bit. It probably hurt us in a in a negative way rather than assisting the, the balance that we had in that one. So there's a bit to learn. Um, but yeah, we just got to... You're always learning throughout the day. You know, every single weekend that you finish, no matter how long you've been in it, you get to the end of the weekend and you wish that you could start with the knowledge that you had. So um, yeah, it's just the way that it goes. But it's uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll be a, be a good day and we can try and get, um, get towards the podium. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, we, we get to learn what's, what, what the conditions were, what the car was doing, and try and make some, make some changes to improve it, but so does everybody else on the grid, so we have to try and make sure that our improvements are, are bigger than theirs. Um, we've generally got a good car on race day. Um, we came to Brands Hatch with a little bit of different concept to try and make it work on a Saturday. Didn't quite work as well as we hoped, but at least we proved a, uh, you know, a a point from our perspective what we needed to know internally so that was good um, but yeah it's, it's, it's an old tough championship isn't it so just gotta I say play the game um, try and get as many points as we can yes we're gonna be moving forwards and you know with the I think I had 48 kilos of success ballast that's coming out um, I think I'll have a little bit 9 or 18 kilos something like that um, still on board so it should make a, a sizable difference but who knows just gotta try and get stuck in and see what happens So one of the drivers who's in the thick of the action in race one was Aidan Moffat, who we spoke to yesterday, who had a great qualifying. How was that race for you? It looked looked lively. Uh, frustrating. Uh, we were, even in qualifying, we took we took a while to switch the front tyres on. Um, and I knew that was going to be the case come the, come the race. Um, got up to second off the start, and uh, yeah, the Hondas were just blisteringly fast. So um, I think I got a little tap, a little helping hand from Shedden. Um, and then Dan and Robottom, he was flying, so I never put up too much of a fight. And from there we were in fourth and the tyres were starting to come in. Um, but yeah, I got and again into the last corner, kind of nudged wide 
uh, which dropped me from fourth to eighth, which is, oh yeah, it's frustrating, but on Thursday I would have signed up for an eighth. Yeah. Um, it's more annoying just the pace we had, and I think if it wasn't for that, fourth, fifth, we, we would have comfortably held that as the car started coming into it. And, uh, we, we had the pace there, but that's the it's the nature of touring cars. It's it's so close that if you get nudged wide, it usually isn't one place you you lose. Usually it's a handful, and I was continued into turn one, just held out on the marbles, and eventually joined back in eighth. Yeah, that's that's the tricky thing, isn't it? You get you get one one edge wide, and then suddenly it turns into three or four by the time you get to the next three corners, really. Um, but looking to the next race, eighth place, still pretty good. You you can race from there, and if you've learnt a bit about the car as well. But there's a little bit of rain in the air, and we're standing next to some wet tires here. So your team's obviously getting ready for for if it does start raining. Yeah, it's usually I usually like this when I was in front wheel drive anyway. You know, when it's that in between of that gamble when the car is going to be loose, it's not so fun in real wheel drive, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think we've, we've found a few things that the car will be better again in the in the dry. Um, typically, we, we're usually strong in the wet, so either or, we're happy. We just hope it's not in, in between them both, which is for the real wheel drive. That's usually a bit of a struggle for us. So, also being an elite sportsman, obviously your diet is a massive, massive thing. So, I mean, I, just as we were about to talk, we, we I sort of, I, I, I got you, you, he's got his crisps here and uh, a, a brownie. He's got a brownie, so that's a bit of energy from there. Water. But, uh, water. I was, oh, I'm water, water obviously is great. So, uh, <laughs> but obviously, <laughs> elite athlete Aidan Moffitt, good luck in race two. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Let's have a chat with the podium finishers to see how the race went from their point of view. I think the issue was we were only taking two or three tenths a lap out of Tom, you know, he didn't make any mistakes, but for anybody when you, you know, when you've got to fight to get into that position and use a bit of the tyre, you know, uh, yeah, it became difficult. When he was four seconds up the road or whatever it was, that's a lot in anyone's book with a professional driver to try and catch back up. But stuck to the task, got to his bootleg on the last lap, and as everyone says, you know, another lap or two and we'd have been uh, causing them lots of problems. You know, starting fourth, you're on a little down slope, so my focus was just getting a good start, and I, and I did that. Um, but then I got into the lead and I just said to myself, you know what, just absolutely throw it, attack the track. It's just like you would in qualifying and, and let's build this gap. You know, they all seem to be squabbling a little bit and, and obviously I had a clear track to just take a racing line from the start. So that was what won me the race, is a three second gap. And, and after that, I was just managing the tyres. Again, not making a mistake. You know, you don't need to win these races by a lot. You just need to cross the line first. So, you know, I was sort of allowing everybody to push harder and, and just in case there was a safety car or, you know, something happened towards the end of the race and they caught me, I wanted to have the car underneath me to, to go again. Um, so my, my engineer was just telling me instructions like go attempt quicker um, and, I, and I just wanted a half a second gap going into my last lap, which, which I think I had. Yeah, it's nice, you know, first pole position, first podium in the same weekend is not going too bad. Would have been better if we hadn't screwed the starter, but, you know, these things happen. I took, you know, I took a decision to use less RPM. It didn't pay off. <laughs> so there you go. Unfortunately, it was not a very good start, but we called it back. Some good moves, I think. So, yeah, it was OK. It's good. My start was actually OK, uh, but the rear-wheel drive cars just make a much better start. We got mugged on the way into turn one, so... You know, it was okay, my start was was fine, quite slippy up there, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is, that's something that we can't change. I think it's, um, you've got to try and minimise your losses, haven't you, you know, so it's just a case of look in the mirrors, see where people are coming through, see where they're not, and just try and maintain the best position we can, so I think we dropped down to eighth or something, so um, got a bit rough and ready for a couple of laps and then push our way back through, you know, so... Uh, the, the problem with that is you, you're fighting it out and we're taking life out the front tyre, you know. So by the time we got through and past Jake and chasing down Flash, we just ran out of front tyres. But it is what it is, you know, it's a good, good, good result for race one. Both race wins I've led on the first lap and it's a bit nerve-wracking knowing that you've got 24 laps to just manage and, and all you're doing is just consistently racing against yourself. Um, it sounds weird, but like having that gap just means you're just consistently um, trying to beat your last lap time. So. It's a little bit of a mind game, um, but I controlled it well again, and um, you know I'm delighted to have my first win of the season, and um, you know it's it's great to just kind of kickstart my season now because I've I've had terrible luck before. 
well, we've got to carry some weight now. So um, obviously we, we were fortunate yesterday night we didn't have to carry any. So just see what that brings. You know, we'll just try and do the same again and minimise the weight loss really or the weight damage. So just going to try and score some more points, try and stay out of trouble. And uh, you know, it's still a long day, two two races to come. So we'll get a good call. Well, you know, we tested with weight, um, and, and in winter testing, I even tried Max Ballast here, and I know what it'll do. The engineers know what it'll do. We'll make a few set of tweaks, and everybody around me's got more weight as well, because the two Hondas were light, had no weight, so did I, and Moffitt didn't have any weight, so they all gained weight. So we'll just have to see, but my main focus is getting another good start and see what happens. If I'm in the lead after the first lap, I'll control it. Um, and if somebody comes through doing a blinder with no weight, then, then good on them. But it's all about points now. Join us after the break for all the highlights from race two here at Brands Hatch. And I think this man, Ash Sutton, could be the man on the move. He's got no success ballast now. Well, very little, he's reduced a lot. But also, there's a little bit of moisture in the air. And this man knows how to drive a car in slippery conditions. fans back here and I can hear all the cars bipping their horns I'm sure you can hear them as well it's great to see all the drivers appreciating all the fans being involved what a great day here at Brands Hatch Let's have a look at the Pitch BTCC app users' predictions for race two. The cars are just leaving the pit lane for race two. I'm not sure what's going to happen. There's a little bit of rain in the air, but not as much as maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. Let's have a look at the race highlights and see how they all got on. Round eight of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship is go. Good start made despite the weight by Oliphant. Good start this time by Dan Robottom who gets past Shedden and also getting up past him is Ash Sutton. So Robottom this time does make a good start. Ingram to the outside, Shedden's been tapped into a slide. Can he hang on to it? He can, he's out wide, he's losing places but he's not been collected. He's still at the races though but Gordon Shedden drops down the order and Rick Parfit spins in the background. More drama up at Druids. Smiley runs six, the more drama there because that's Jelly and Shedden into the gravel. Shedden might keep going, but yes, he has just. But wow, look at all the gravel in the front. And that's Jake Hill off the road, and Ingram comes up to have a go at the Honda. He's going to go through on the inside line. Yes, Ingram goes second. To the inside line goes the infinity, and Sutton goes through. And is Ingram now up the inside? I think he is going up to Druids. He goes oh. through on the inside line. Now, was that a push to pass? It certainly wasn't intentional contact, but contact there was. Ingram has benefited, he's taken over the lead. This is going to be a drag race for the liners. Look, here comes Sutton up on the inside line. Gets up alongside the BMW, gets his nose ahead of the BMW. Tom Ingram wins. Second place across the timing line goes to Ash Sutton by 38 thousandths of a second. That was a real classic British touring car race there. Lots of rough and tumble, a few disasters for people, but a few good results for others. So let's have a chat with them later on. We're going to have a chat with Stephen Jelly, who was involved in that big hit, and we can see a, a few bits of his car behind us as the team start repairing it. You know, uh, lap one was pretty fren frenetic there. Um, got beaten up a bit on the first lap and then Got a great drive off Clearways, the final corner. Um, got the drive on uh, on Shedden. Um, he's sort of, I don't think he's seen me getting the drive and he's moved up. So I've gone in there and, and then he's come, he's come back down. Um, and um, we've run out of racetrack, there's been no room. So, um, you know, you think it over again and again in your head, what could you have done differently? Um, but it's so hard to overtake this weekend when those opportunities arise, you've got to try and take them. And, uh, it's just not worked out for us this time. No, that's right. I mean, it, was it a heavy impact or not? We couldn't see much because of all the dust. Yeah, it was a dusty impact. Um, not too bad. Um, there's no suspension damage. It's just body work. 
Um, so the car's fine. Um, good to go again, but you know, lining up on the last row of the grid, it's going to be very tough in the next one. But hopefully the heavens will open or something will happen because, uh, you know, as we see from Colin, um, if you start back there, he's not been making any progress and he's a three-time champion. So, you know, it's tough. Yeah. Now, going into to race three, you've had some great pace all weekend, right up in the top 10 in sort of most, well, all the sessions, I think, and then in, in the races, but look, luck hasn't gone your way. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, you know, we expect uh, we expect a lot of ourselves in this team, and Tom's shown how how competitive we can be. The times are so close for the whole grid. No option tyre this weekend, which is a shame um, to sort of mix things up a bit. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens in this one. The weather forecast is for a brain, so yeah, we'll see. Okay, well, we'll get our brollies out and uh, see how you get on from the back of the grid. Cool. Thank you very much. Well, after race two, that was a fantastic defensive performance. I've got to say, it looked a little bit 50-50 to me at that battle there, but how did it look from your side? Uh, I gave it everything. 75 kilos on board around here, and you know, Tom and Ash both had like half my weight. Um, they did a great job to come through, so I thought I did it. I thought I had it covered, you know, we, we, I think we've gone into turn one like 12 times, exactly the same. Nobody was any closer or further away. and. A bit opportunistic, but I'd say it's probably 30-70 in my favour, but um, I'm really just pleased to have finished on the podium. I mean, I've got a great points haul, I've got a big smile on my face, I've really kick-started my championship, and honestly, I, I, I couldn't have driven any better. I don't think anybody on the track would have driven that any better to control that race, and, um, you know, with all that weight, so I'm, I'm over the moon. <laughs> Yeah, you really seem to handle the weight well, because to be honest with you, it looked like you had it really covered. But I mean, do you think the team will put a protest in about that move from Tom Ingram? I've no idea. I haven't even seen them. So um, that's not what I'm thinking about. You know, I'm just happy I did such a good job. And, you know, I mixed it with two of the best drivers on the grid. And, you know, it was um, it was a great race. So, yeah, I'm really pleased. And hopefully, I don't know what the grid, reverse grid draw was, but hopefully it's a low number and, and I can have a good start again and, and good race three. Well, good luck. Fantastic weekend for you Thank so you far. Good luck in race three. Thank you very much. I'm here with race winner Tom Ingram. He's got a big smile on his face, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. Really, really good fun. It was, uh, it was a race that you just kind of have to take your time. You know, there was so much going on. I started six, I was up to third, I was down to fourth. You know, there was all sorts going on. So the car was, was great. And, and, and it was really a case of, of just take my time over the course of the race. I managed to get, you know, I don't know what happened to Jake. I don't know if it was a puncher or what happened. Um, but obviously that made my life a little bit easier from that sense. I saw Dan and, and Tom were starting to get a little bit dicey. So I kind of just had a look and see where those guys were looking and started to close a bit of a gap. There was obviously the contact with Dan and Tom that, that Tom ended up with Dan on Dan on the grass. So yeah, there's lots going, lot going on. But really once I got in behind Tom, it was just a case of playing the waiting game. There were various places Tom was quicker, there were various places I was quicker, and I just had to sort of pick my moments. I took about four to five laps before going into Paddock, just, just showing my nose, just to see if he would look in his mirror and defend. And it came to the last lap of the race, I got a fantastic one out of Clearways. I was in his toe, that's where I was a lot quicker than him on the brakes into Paddock all race. He left a gap and I didn't need a second invitation to throw it down the inside. Yes, there was contact, but at some point, you, it's, it's unavoidable when we're, when we're racing cars. It's going to happen, but I'm really pleased with it. Really, really pleased. Our third weekend, our second win. We've been on the podium every weekend so far this year, so it's been a good good third of the year so far. Now, brilliant. Great start of the year for you. Now, looking for race three, obviously you've got more success ballast on now. It's a big old lump of weight to carry around here. I haven't seen what the grid is yet, what they're drawn out, but you've got a fantastic start in that race, so that's going to that's gonna help you out wherever they pull you out. Well, I hope so. I mean... I didn't play it that well. I pulled ball 12 out. Probably need to, I'm a bit out of practice of pulling balls out of the thing to see where they are. So number 12, so I think we'll start just this side of the dart for crossing. So yeah, it's gonna make it with 75 kilos in 12th place. I think this is gonna be fairly entertaining this one. Well, good luck. Let's hope for another great result at the end of the day. Nice, thanks Rob, thank you. Mate. So I'm here with Ash Sutton, who had a fantastic race in race two, really forced his way through, finished second on the road, 
maybe if there's a bit of a stewards inquiry, it could turn into first place. Well, yeah, I don't know. There was a bit of hard guard going on between the Toms, shall we say? But um, look, I'm happy with, happy with second. It's, it, we come here knowing that this is our weakest track of the calendar, and to be batting around picking up these sort of points, it, I couldn't ask for any more. No, it's fantastic. I mean, it looked like you had really good tyre management because the car just seemed to switch on over the last three or four laps. Yeah, it was almost a, an element of getting caught up underneath everyone. You're trying to balance the overtaking with defending. Luckily, Cookie dropped back off the, the rear of me in the latter phase of the race, so I could then purely focus on overtaking Dan and setting a move up. So, yeah, uh, the side drafting comes to a tee. We did Dan and Tom to the line, so it's good. No, good stuff. Well, going back to the last race at Snetterton, we didn't catch you at the end of the day because you were off and away. Is it a helicopter you've got when you leave the circuit? Dreamland, isn't it? My name's not Jason Plato. <laughs> no, but all the viewers on the Pitch BTCC app voted you as their driver of the day. So congratulations, and I think the way it's going today, maybe you might be in with a shout today as well. Yeah, I think Tom's going to give me a run for my money here. but and Well, both Tom's again, but yeah, I massively appreciate that at Snetterton. It was a, a good weekend for us. Well, good luck in race three. Where did you get picked out in the end for race three? Uh, I think they pulled 12, so we're 11. OK, all right, well, that's not great, but uh, you, you've won from there before. Yeah, well, let's hope it rains <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see what happens. I'm here with racing driver Charlie Martin, who's down here today with BMW UK Motorsport. Charlie's taken over their Instagram page today. So what does that mean? It means that they've given me the login details and I'm going to be here all weekend, basically taking people through what goes into a British Touring Car Championship weekend with West Surrey Racing, showing them things behind the scenes, showing them a bit of the car, a bit of the action and really just showing that experience through the eyes of somebody who's not familiar with the BTCC paddock. No, exactly. Well, I mean, you really are with one of the best teams in the paddock. I mean, they, they haven't had a, the best day today with Colin a little bit further down the grid. But it's interesting to see. I mean, what, what sort of things have you picked up from the way they work as a team all together? Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting seeing, you know, things like, for example, how the success ballast plays into this weekend. You know, you say Colin carrying 57 kilos of, of ballast. I mean, yeah, it's nearly as much as I weigh. It's, uh, it's a lot for a driver to have to deal with that. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm really enjoying it. Just as a spectator and a, a fly on the wall to, to, you know, to be a part of that experience over the weekend is really exciting. <laughs> after the break we're going to have a chat with some of the fans and also some of the technical guys behind the British Touring Car Championship make sure you download the Pitch BTCC app to get all the info So I'm here with James Rogers who's from Halfords Racing with Cataclean but it's got, got another hat on as well because Team Dynamics, they produce all the alloy wheels that go on every single touring car on the grid. I mean, that's a massive commitment because each car has about 50 wheels for each car, so it keeps you guys busy. Yeah, it's a little bit of a nightmare at points, especially now in this post or coming up to post-COVID age because lead times in factories and getting a murder is taking longer, so we're looking out to order in for next year now. And But the wheel's been around a long time. It's been... It's been evolved over a lot of years. It's used in a lot of motorsport around the world. It's used in rallying as well. And, and it's it's an incredibly tough wheel. Um, and it, it's typical of Team Dynamics, really. Everything we do goes into everything we do, so we make it better and better. And we've just, we've just done another batch of them, and we've made some slight changes. Just as touring cars evolve, the wheels and the components change with them, so yeah. So the most obvious difference between this British touring car Team Dynamics wheel and a road-going wheel is that you've just got one nut in the centre. So that's that's a big difference. Usually on a road car, you've got sort of four or five around the outside. So that's that's obviously quite a big tooling exercise. And what's the, what's the main reason for that? Well, it's called a centre lock wheel. So we use a centre lock nut primarily for speed and also for safety. 
when we've got a sensor lock, we can put a safety pin on it as well. So we put the nut on, we put a safety pin through, which is which is a catch all if the nut starts to unwind. It's it's nigh and impossible to do that with standard road car wheel nuts and little 17 mil nuts. So it's an, and it's an incredibly quick way of changing a wheel. Most forms of motorsport have got it with one sensor lock. You need one battery gun or an air gun to, to put a nut on it very quickly. So, I mean, looking at this wheel, for me, it looks much the same as a road car wheel, but it must be much, much stronger than a normal road going wheel. Oh yeah, massively stronger. I mean, we road car wheels are normally cast on, on general everyday cars, and um, they're built to be a certain strength to meet regulations around the world, and then regulations change. In motorsport, we make them much tougher. This wheel's a heat treated wheel, so it's heat treated to make it stronger and um, it's, it's a lot bulkier as well so it's quite light still at just over 10 kilos um, but it's very strong and it's designed if we have a tyre failure that we don't have a wheel failure as a result of the tyre failure so at least you've got you still got something round on it and you'll see frequently big accidents in touring cars and rallying and the wheel's still in one piece the tyre might be hanging off but the wheel survives so this is the only wheel that's allowed to be used in British touring cars so how many years is that now since that's been happening? I, I, have I caught you out now? I, 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 <laughs> you've done well so far, but it's quite a while though, isn't it? Since it ever since NGTC came yeah, on board. Definitely, definitely from 2012, and I think actually it was before then. I think it probably goes back to 2007, 2008, something like that. Well, I know we had some, we didn't have dynamics on our little golf, but we did after a while because they were much better, and the ones we had before were much more expensive and not as strong as these. So, so they're obviously doing their job. So. Good luck for the rest of the day. Just had a great result. Maybe sneak a win in the next one? Yeah, I think for us, it's going to be a little bit more difficult now we wait on. However, Dan's good. Dan's got good racecraft and Gordon's Gordon. You know, he's always on form. So if we can, if we can have a good result in this race, then we want a load of rain for race three. Get a load of rain for race three and it's game on then. You know, we can, we can, we can make a real good weekend out of it. Now, good, luck. Well, good luck for the rest of the day and thanks for your time with the wheels. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. So two of the great things about being at Brands Hatch is Paddock Hill Bend and having the fans back here watching. I'm going to have a chat with them all, find out exactly who they think is going to be winning the British Touring Car races today. I'm here with British Touring Car fans, Conrad and Caitlin. What have you missed about not being at the British Touring Car circuit? Just the adrenaline, really. Most the adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. Love the adrenaline. The atmosphere, generally. Just being here and hearing everyone and stuff. Uh, just the general atmosphere, the, the, the smell of the cars, the ambience, just the whole thing. We missed, missed it in Wayfair. Yeah. How about you, Becky? Yeah, just the noise of the cars. You don't quite get that through the telly, so like, it's nice to be in here again. Brilliant. Really good. Missed it. Really missed it. Uh, well, it's great to have the crowds back, isn't it? It's great to have the atmosphere and uh, see the drivers in the flesh. The racing's always full of uh, interesting racing. Yeah, no, that's right. That's the main, and, and lots of noise. Yeah, lots of noise. How about you, Clive? No, I really like it. I think it's it's it's, it's a, you know the year we've had. I think it's really good that you know people like places like Banjax come open, so we can actually enjoy it and stuff like that. It's just fantastic. Really close racing, and I we always like Brent Hatch, one of our favourite tracks. So I'm with some more junior British touring car fans, Austin, Jack, and Annie. Austin was there at Stetson a couple of weeks ago, so he's a real fan, die hard, really. So who's your favourite driver? Um, I just uh, Plato. 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 Why do you like Plato? Um, because he, he is old and he's from my dad's day, so I'm, um, so I'm happy that he's in my days. Well, I'm sure Jason would love to hear that you like him because he's old, so that's great. How about you? Uh, Plato as well. Plato as well. One. And you, Annie? Jade Edwards. Oh, Jade Edwards fan. That's right. Do you really like her style, do you? Yeah. yeah she's quite aggressive, gets stuck in against the boys, doesn't she? Yeah. So who's your favourite drivers? Well, unfortunately, he's not racing this year. Mr Collard has, has retired. Okay. But in the, in the current one, Ash Shutton, you've got to admire that bloke. He can't yeah. drive a car. Yeah. Um, and good old Tom Ingram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. Yeah, I like seeing uh, Shedden. It's nice having him back. Okay. Yeah, you know, he's quite feisty, isn't he? He seems to get stuck in. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I like watching him, yeah, he's interesting. Yeah, you, Sam? So, because uh, of Jason Plato, I've been a fan of him since I've started watching it, and because my, my dad has got me into it all. Okay, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. How about you? Same as, same as my brother. Jason Plato fan as well? Yeah. How about you? Jason Plato, I've been coming here since the 90s. Okay. So, yeah, so I've been coming for quite a while now. So, we, so yeah, so we've, now we can come back, the fans allowed in. We, 
Dave, we can come along and manage to get tickets for this time. It's only 4,000, but we managed to get tickets, which is good. No, it's pretty, it looks yeah. a fantastic yeah. crowd. To be honest, yeah. with you, 4,000 people here, it looks great. Yeah, it looks, if, if it looks more than four, we didn't think it would look like it was 4,000, but it look, does look like more than 4,000. Your predictions for the day, you've you just had one good result with Tom Ingram, haven't you? What about race three? It might be a little trickier from yeah. further back on the grid. Well, yeah, um, I reckon, yeah, I, I'm hoping Ingram probably gets about third, third maybe, hopefully third. Uh, fifth, uh, fifth, being, being optimistic. <laughs> you were being over optimistic. No, I, being I, fifth. Think third. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, it would like to see Shedden's obviously had a bad race, so has Turkinson. Um, if those guys can come through the fields, hopefully. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But how about you, Becky? Oh, just, I, I have absolutely no idea. The, the, the last race is always the best, because you never know. Like, you always just have someone that you don't expect to win. Well, nice to have some honesty, because I haven't got a clue what's going on either. Uh, I'm not sure, just anybody. anybody. I love the minis. No, all right, OK, all right. Well, I'm just taking it out on the track at the minute. Yeah. How about you, Mike? Oh, well, for the last, for the touring car race, we'd want, we'd want Sutton to win, wouldn't we? I don't really know. I reckon I want to say Plato, but I can't see him doing anything at the moment. But well, he's getting quicker and quicker as the day's gone on. Yeah, we might do it. You never know. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And that, yeah. How about you two guys? Other than Jason Plato, uh, other than Jason, who do you think is going to win? Nicholas Hamilton. Nick Hamilton, right? That's a, that's a curve. Colin, but he's far from the back, so yeah, I don't think right. it's right. going to be hard for him it's again. Tricky. Well, maybe a bit of rain might help that whole thing as well. Um, Really be jelly because I think it's going to be Turkington because he normally wins. Okay. Turkington. Turkington. What do you reckon? I think Plato as well. Plato as well. Okay, well that's great. Troy, who do you reckon is going to win the last race? Ash Sutton. Ash Sutton. That's a good one. How about you, Clive? I think um, I think Oliver might do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, he might yeah. do it. Well, he's definitely had a good day. He's, he's definitely had a good day. Had a good day. And I'm glad you guys have had a good day as well. Thanks very much for your time. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Cheers. Thank you. I absolutely love the British Touring Car Championship. Love talking to all the drivers and the teams, finding out exactly what's going on behind the scenes, sometimes anyway. But if you want to download the Pitch BTCC app, you've got features like Pit Time, where you've got videos. You can answer questions and ask questions from the drivers. Okay, so I'm here in the paddock with Tom Oliphant and the soon-to-be Mrs. Oliphant, Jen Gordon. They've just got engaged last week, so a bit of a human story in the British Touring Car paddock. So, uh, Jen, more importantly, did he do it right? Oh, he did it so well. I can't believe it. It's absolutely beautiful. Massive ring, which right, is always, excellent. you know, always good. Um, and he had a hidden photographer, which was really nice because as much as it's a shock in the moment you want to capture it to remember what it felt like and looked like and it's so much easier when you actually see the photo no fantastic so i mean were you a bit worried that it could be a yes or a no uh, well she's been with me for 11 and a half years and around a race paddock for nine so no i was pretty sure she'd say yes but well, i think you get less for murder don't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably but um you know what like it was just i didn't want her to find out i wanted it to be a big surprise and um I wanted it to be the moment that, you know, she sort of imagined. So, um, yeah, I've got the little pre-race jitters just before as well. But luckily, I've had a bit of practice of calming those down. <laughs> no, good stuff. Well, congratulations, you Thank two. You. Looking forward to your big day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So I'm with Steve Dubman, boss of BTC Racing. His driver, Josh Cook, just had a great race up to fifth place and starts the next race in third place on the grid. But we walk down the pit lane and we've seen there's a there's an engine cage and frame sitting here and it looks like they're gonna have to do an engine change before race three. What's all that about, Steve? So um, the car's come in, Josh had a great fifth finish and uh, the diagnostics say that we've got a real issue with the engine. So it's a straightforward engine swap. Right, okay. And uh, when you say a, a, a problem with the engine, is that it was still running all right? Did Josh feel any problems or, or was it just something that they saw in the data? Yeah, it's all the data. Uh, we, it was running okay, but we have lost some water. Uh, not all of it, but we've lost water and the data says it's got to come out. Okay. So, so it's a 20, 25 minute, 30 minute change. Okay, well that's, that's incredible to change an engine in that time. But, I, but the big reason is because is you've got the front subframe all built up ready to go but I've already seen you boys having to do this early in the year in Thruxton so they've had lots of practice. Yeah, yeah well the, at Thruxton of course they were repairing the car as well for Jade but this is a straightforward heart transplant 
and uh, should take about 30 minutes. No, that's brilliant. Well, good luck. Are, are you going to get your hands dirty? Don't need to. I've got a good team here. <laughs> that's brilliant. Good luck, Steve. Cheers. Good luck. See you after the break when we'll have all the action from race three and also who you, the fans, on the Pitch BTCC app picked as your driver of the day. Welcome back to Brands Hatch for race three here. There's a little bit of rain in the air. We've got Adam Morgan on pole, who's been pulled out of the hat from 12th place on the grid. So really good news for him. He'll be looking to go a little bit quicker than this 60 kph sign here. But we'll have all the highlights and interviews for you to view coming up next. Slow start made by Senna Proctor. Good getaway by Aidan Moffat, but a great start by Morgan. Then he leaps forward into the lead as Moffat comes up on the outside there to try to go around the outside of Goff. Good getaway also by Jason Plato in the Astra. He slots into fourth as the cars drop through Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. So far, so good. Up into Shed has got all sideways. There's a drama for that Ollie Jackson's car. The bonnet has opened, the bonnet has peeled back. Jack Goff up into second place again. He's retaken Moffat. Plato closing, 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 gets into the back of him, tries to prize open the door, elbows out, he gets up the inside. They're going to be side by side to the line in a race won by Adam Morgan, the ninth of his career. Adam Morgan wins at Brands Hatch for Cargill to in Sicily, but look at the third. Side by side over the line. Who got the nod? According to the timekeepers, Aidan Moffat third by 12 thousandths of a second from Jason Plato. So a great result for the Car God Sicily team with Adam Morgan taking his first win in their new BMW. Jack Goff also in a new car in the Seat Cupra as the music starts kicking off behind. So great result for them. Let's see if we can get a few interviews with the guys and see how the race was for them. So I'm with one of the stars of race three. Jake Hill came all the way from the back really after that puncture in race two. Fought his way up to 13th place with lots of on the edge manoeuvres, quite quite entertaining for us watching. Yeah, it was uh, it was good. I think the bottom line is I wasn't very happy. So when I'm angry, obviously that's what comes out. So yeah, I was. Um, we're all, we're we're also so down on power. I don't know what's what's happened with everyone else has had an increase and, and we haven't. But we are by hands down the slowest car in a straight line. So that just made me even more angry to be honest. And whenever I was getting a run on on the BMWs, they're just disappearing. So I thought right, sod you. So straight up the inside and um, had that mentality all the way through, really. Now, did you find out what the problem was in race two with the puncture? It turns out we, we believe it's a it's an unlucky dose of slight contact with, with Ingram. When I passed Tom, although it was all fair and legit, you know, I just had a little scuff with him and, and they believe that's what um, tore the sidewall and, and I had a slow puncture. So unfortunately, yeah, it's a pain, but it's good to know that it's not the car's wear that did that. Well, I hope the luck comes back to you because we want to see a lot more of Jake Hill doing those sort of drives later in the season. Yeah, thank you. So I'm here with Ash Sutton, who's ended up being the most popular man again with the Pitch BTCC app users as he's been voted driver of the day again. I'll take that two in a row. Uh... God, I'm going to try and top that at autumn, but no, fantastic. Again, it's um, a mega weekend for us at Laser Tools Racing. Not just for me, but for the team. Aidan's done a fantastic job as well. So, yeah, I appreciate appreciate all the love. No, it's great. Well, it's, well, it's great for the team as well because you've got the team award as well. So, the most points scored by the two cars of any team over the weekend. Yeah, and it was nice. It was a nice way to, to send off Will, who was my number one last year. Uh, Aidan's number one this year. It was his last meeting with us. So, it was a perfect, perfect scenario to to top it off with Aiden's podium and sending him off. So yeah, fantastic for the team. Well, moving on to Alton Park, a great circuit for you personally, but also a great circuit for real, real World Drive. And you're leading the championship still. Yeah, I don't know if it's great for the weight though, no. Sean, sure. let's be <laughs> honest, come on. Not up Clay Hill, it's not great, 75 kilos. There's a lot of stop and start, isn't there, Jesus. But um, yeah, look, it is meant to be a, a real drive car track, shall we say, but um, 
yeah, I think the weight will play a big part of it there. Um, so we're just going to have to go there and try and do the best job we can on the Saturday and, and roll it out on the Sunday again. No, fantastic. I reckon at the end of the season, this weekend's going to be quite important to how the championship dice rolls. Yeah, it's quite funny. You laugh and say, oh, we only extended it by one point. But you know how this game works. That one point can mean, mean the world when it comes to the last round. So, yeah, I'm... Yeah, I'm chuffed with that. It's uh, a fantastic weekend. Well, Fatek, some great results for you and the team. Yeah, no, thank you. So as the rain starts to fall more heavily here at Brands Hatch, let's have an interview with our top three podium finishers and see how the race was for them. A debut podium for the Team Hard Cooper with Jack Goff at the wheel, who was at a pretty, pretty easy race by the look of it. Oh, it's easy for you to say, mate, yeah. Um, it's a little bit of payback for all the hard work the boys and girls at Team Hard have been doing over the winter, you know. It's not perfect, we want to win races, but hey, third weekend in, we've got nine points finishes out of nine, and we've got a podium in our third weekend at their home track. So, you know, it was written in the stars to win it, but it didn't quite happen. But, you know, we'll take P2, we can work on that. We've got a two-day uh, Goodyear tyre test coming up, which will give us a chance to try things that we, we can't do on a race weekend. So, things are looking good. I can see the front, which is nice. I haven't done that for a few years now. So, to be able to see the battles at the front or be in them, you know, that's what we're trying to do. So, yeah, it's all going to... So, your days ended up up on the podium. After a bit, bit of a tough start to the day, you've really pulled it off. I think I was chatting to you with the, br <laughs> the brownie and the crisps. I've not really done it, ain't it? <laughs> oh, I, th I think I should tell all the drivers start eating prawn cocktail crisps. Oh, I'll, I'll need to get a bigger suit. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's brilliant. It's, um, I mean, what, whatever happened that last race, I kind of tell yourself as you do, we've come away with two top tens after not having the consistency all of last year. and. Um, struggling this year so to to build on two top tens with a podium and finally reward the whole team for all the all the help and um, all the hard work it's it's a, it's a nice feeling and it's also a relief to because it's been so long being on the podium i mean yourself as a driver you know what it's like you some you need that result sometimes just to kind of right we can do it let's go from there and it's, it's definitely a confidence boost i'm with a delighted adam morgan who's been really busy everybody wants to interview him what a fantastic race for you Mega day, and it's been such a tough day. You know, we started P21. Uh, we, we had top 10 pace in qualifying, but because of track limits, we were pushed to the back. And our goal for the whole day was, you know, get ourselves in contention for a race three uh, reverse grid. And look at the draw pulls out to 12. We go to number one, and it, from there, it just get off, get off, get off the grid, get away, and uh, bring it back in P1. And, and I actually thought you might struggle a little bit with some of the cars behind you, but you had good pace and, and held that second place all the way through. No, we've had good pace um, all weekend actually pretty good we just can't switch the tyre on in qualifying spec so race pace at Snetterton we were top five top six and the same today really you know once we get going we're good by lap five lap six we're you know we're as quick as most people it's just trying to switch the tyre on for that one lap you know you know how it is it's uh it's tricky but that's what we're going to focus on at the Goodyear tyre test and uh fingers crossed we can come back fighting the next one so moving on to Wharton Park, it's, it's a good circuit for rear wheel drive and you usually go well there, so you must be looking forward to it. Uh, more so now, <laughs> definitely looking forward to it more now. Uh, yeah, I mean the car the car does well there, as do all rear wheel drives and coming off this weekend is this high to get the, the trophy for the, the teams for the weekend as well. And yeah, it's definitely, definitely really gets you excited for the next meeting. Well, it's a good track for you as well, but also a good track for a rear-wheel drive car. Exactly, and it's local, it's an hour away, so it's perfect for us. So, uh, yeah, no, looking forward to it. Um, it. It's been a bit of a bogey track in the past with the A-Class, so hopefully we can turn that around this year with, with, with the rear-wheel drive and the BMW, and uh, hopefully I'll be talking to you again, Sean, with, a, with another podium cap. Well, definitely, well, fantastic day, and I'm really pleased for the team, because I, I know it's been hard work at the start of the season. So do you reckon this could be a turning point to your season? You sort of found a few little bits with the car, maybe clicked with the car a little bit better? Yeah, I found a few things in kind of driving and making the car react a lot better. Um, 
I mean, the car's always been strong. You just need to look at Ash. Um, it's, um, he's, he's perfected that thing, and he has with the Subaru, and you know, there's a lot of characteristics from that car. So, yeah, it's fine. Finally, kind of understanding the car more, and um, we've had good pace. We've had good pace the last two rounds. We've we've just not had nothing to show for it. So it's, it's nice to finally finally have that. Well, I mean, it's great to see your team. They were so excited. You're absolutely drenched in cheap champagne. Sweat, and so, champagne <laughs> and water, yeah, great but 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 that's great. I mean, have you really brought it home for them? Yeah, exactly. No pressure, eh? I had all of them on my shoulders, but um, they gave me a good car, and it's a reliable car as well. And that's one of the biggest things in touring cars. You can't have an unreliable car, so it gives us the position then to move forward and try things. And I think I mentioned to you before on the show the other day, it's um, it's nice to have a car that actually feels different when you make a little change compared to the old VW that we make massive changes and it make absolutely no difference. So it's looking good. We'll keep our feet firmly on the ground, but um, yeah, we're getting there. No, well, congratulations on a great day and hope this is for bigger things, maybe a win later in the season. You've jinxed it now. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Well done, well done. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Tune into the Pitch BTCC studio show this Sunday at 10pm on Sporty Stuff TV, where I'll be joined by Jake Hill and Scott Stringfellow. So as the trucks start packing away here at Brands Hatch and the rain starts to slightly subside, but that's been planned all weekend, but has never really arrived, Ash Sutton is the real winner here today. His main championship rival, Colin Turkington, had a bit of a disaster points-wise. Didn't score any, I think. It's uh, Or maybe one or two, so it's really, really bad. Tom Ingram had a good day as well. Tom Oliphant obviously was mega all weekend and scored a big haul of points. But leading into Alton Park, those rear-wheel drives, they're going to be hard to beat. Thanks for joining us on the Pitch BTCC programme. Make sure you download the Pitch BTCC app for all the news and views on the British Touring Car Championship and to get your information across as well. Thanks for joining us and see you at Alton Park. <laughs>